Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sergey and uh, my colleague Pavel today will be talking to you about the journey of automation that we had on the project that we are working on, Linux system roles. So Linux system roles is a set of Ansible roles for managing Linux systems, uh, subsystems like networking, storage and so on and so on. And uh, it is critical to automate low level, labor intensive, repetitive tasks uh, in uh, the modern world, uh, in the modern world, and uh, we're lucky to have many tools that allow for this automation, such as GitHub Actions, Packet, and so on. Uh, so uh, today we will cover uh, two main topics, which is the automatic release of uh, the content of GitHub repository to Ansible Galaxy, and also how we release the content as a Fedora RPM using packet. And uh, so to begin with uh, about how we release content on GitHub itself. We have a script that developers launch when they need a new release. And this script does uh, three things. First of all, it uh, uses conventional commits format to um, decide what should be the new semantic version and uh, to generate changelog for the new release. And after this, it pushes the PR with the updated changelog and with the new version to GitHub for a review. So after developers, developer performs this review and uh, merges the PR, uh, we have a workflow that runs automatically. And this workflow does two things. It first of all creates a git tag and GitHub release and publishes the repository content to Ansible Galaxy. And uh, to begin with, I need to explain first what is the conventional commits format. So you have seen the format on screen. So you have the type of the change, then the optional exclamation mark. Exclamation mark uh, marks if the change is API breaking or not, and uh, the title of the PR. One note here is that we used conventional commits format initially for the commits themselves, but it turned out that commits are more like uh, aimed at developers, so they have many technical details that end users don't care at all about. So uh, instead we decided to use this format on PR titles that may be more vague and may just describe the actual feature that the PR introduces. And uh, you see the example of our new git log using this uh, format, Ra rather the PR titles, the titles of the PR mer merged. And uh, conventional commit format, first of all, allows us to define the next semantic version, and it is done using the type of the pull request, so it has this exclamation mark that introduces a breaking API change. We bump the major version. Then for features, we bump minor versions. And for other changes, we bump the patch version. And of course, you, have, you can have the page with the exclamation mark, so uh, bumping the major version as well. And the second thing that semantic, uh, th that conventional comments allows us to do is to build change log. And again, we use the type to automatically put PR titles into the new features section, in the bug fixes section, and into other changes section. And uh, on the right of the screen, you can see the uh, updated change log with the formatted uh, entries, with the new release, the date, and then all the sections that we need. And uh, to sum up the process, so developer runs the script the script collect, collects merged PRs since the last release and uh, processes them to identify the new semantic version and to generate new changelog. And the pull request with the updated changelog is pushed to the PR and the uh, developer goes and merge the, merges this pull request. And after this, we have another layer of automation, which is a GitHub workflow. As you can see on the screen, this is the workflow that works on pull request pushes to the main branch and uh, only affects requests that change the changelog.md file. And after this, we create a git tag 
GitHub release and uh, propagate this new content of repository to, in our case, to Ansible Galaxy. And from now on, we continue to releasing Fedora RPM using packet that Pavel will cover. So let me uh, take this first. Cool. Packet, that's a tool that automates common uh, packaging uh, tasks and packet service in particular uh, automates proposing uh, Fedora releases from GitHub releases. So it's, uh, the service is triggered by releasing on GitHub. Uh, then uh, it updates the uh, RPM spec file. That means that it bumps the version field and it uh, updates uh, the change log. It uploads uh, the source uh, tarballs to a local side cache and it opens a uh, Pagure pull request with those updates. So it doesn't perform the update, update itself. That I, why I say that it proposes the federal release because now the federal maintainer has to review and merge this Pagure uh, pull request into federal distgit. This is the only manual step in the process. And then uh, when the packet service sees that the pull request is merged, it uh, performs a Koji build and body update. Uh, today, actually, there was a talk sp uh, specifically by the packet team about this tool. You can watch the recording and uh, they have also a booth. So I will not go into details how to configure this uh, service because uh, you can check the talk or check the documentation. I will only give you a very brief overview. So the uh, brief overview is you create a packet YAML in the upstream Git repository and you configure the proposed downstream job that proposes that the downstream pull requests. Or another option is instead you can create the packet YAML in the Fedora dist git and instead you configure a job called pull from upstream. This is uh, useful if you don't have commit access to the upstream uh, project, if you are not a member of the project, so you can configure everything on in Fedora. And you anyway should uh, create the packet YAML in Fedora because you need to define the other two jobs that do, that do the Koji build and the body update. So this is uh, quite simple, it, it looks quite simple at least, and quite useful. But uh, during this process, we encounter a few problems. And I believe if you are a federal maintainer uh, interested in using Packet, you, you would probably encounter them as well. So I thought I would share uh, what we encountered and the resolution. So first pr problem, where to maintain actually the spec file? Because uh, Packet by default assumes you can find it in the GitHub repo, but this means that any federal changes that were made in this Fedora's uh, disk git. For, ex for example, someone proposed some changes using a pull request in Pagure would get overwritten during the next sync from, uh, by packet from, uh, from GitHub. So the solution obviously is to just keep the spec file in the Fedora disk git repo as the primary version. But then packet needs the spec file and uh, it, it is not available. Uh, so the solution is to fetch it from the Fedora disk git when packet does the update and fortunately packet has actions which are kind of hooks that are, can be executed during the process uh, so we set up a hook that uh, downloads uh, it's, it's a simple shell command which downloads the spec file from Fedora disk git for a packet to use and we actually need to uh, download all the files that also are included from the uh, from the spec file because we use include in our spec file. Another option is to configure packet in, in Fedora disk git as I shown on previous slide instead of in the GitHub repo and to use a pull from upstream instead of proposed downstream. Why I haven't used it in our case, it's because this job was not available yet when I started this automation. So as you can see, uh, automation as any other software development is subject to change and often you are lagging behind the newest features that are available in the, to in the tools. Anyway. Uh, another problem we encountered is RPM changelog because by default uh, Packet collects all the git commit messages summaries in the GitHub repo and uses them as a changelog entry for the RPM or it can optionally use the GitHub release description as a changelog entry. But both of uh, those options produce quite verbose changelogs which is contrary to the federal packaging guidelines that state that changelogs should be brief and in particular they must never contain entire copy of the so change log entries. We wanted to comply, of course, with the packaging guidelines. So the solution was again a custom action that just uh, that is called by packet when it needs to collect the 
the changelog entry and there's a simple shell command that echoes the base to version and the version that gets virtual data writes us in environment variable. Third problem was related to multi-source RPMs because actually our presentation is simplified. It talks about one uh, repository on GitHub, but our RPM is assembled from many individual repositories. So this means we have multiple source tags and we need to update them if any of the source turbo changes and packet needs to upload uh, those tables to local side. So to update them if any source turbo changes, we again use a custom action that regenerates uh, a part of the spec file where we have the source tags. It's uh, marked in the spec file. It's actually uh, the spec file is used as a template for this uh, generator and the generator replaces all the source tags by the new source tags that, that are needed. And for uploading uh, uh, the new sources to, the, uh, to look aside, Packet now supports these uh, multi-source RPMs, and if any source is a URL, Packet uploads it to, to look aside. And this was actually implemented by me because I needed it in this project, but now everyone uh, who uh, uses multi -source uh, multiple source tables in RPM can benefit from this. Yeah, so in the confusion, one second. Okay, I'll just hold this for now, probably. So in conclusion, I'd like to say that it's really critical to automate all repetitive tasks that you can and to live up to this standard. We developed this presentation using the tool MARP and the MARP to pages GitHub action that converts a markdown file into presentation and then using GitHub Actions again publishes it to GitHub pages. So now let's proceed to the Q&A section. If anyone has any questions. Then, all right. Then, uh, yes, yeah, so just for you to know, I have uh, another slide with references about every subject that we were covering today. So you can go and click on the links and uh, study everything and also we'll be here around the corner for some time after the presentation. So please uh, come around if you need to. Thank you.